Hi guys, welcome to Cloud Tech. In this interview, we are going to discuss a real MasterCard interview question that we got from students who got placed in uh, MasterCard. And at the end of this interview, we are going to solve one Java coding problem. So let's start with the interview. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what is an optional class in Java? Uh, yes. So uh, starting from uh, when you when you write the code, uh, there is a lot of problem with uh, null checks. So we have to do a lot of null checks. So optional class uh, is the one who solves this problem. So using optional class, uh, you can reduce the number of null check. And uh, uh, when you perform certain operation, uh, at the end of the operation, you either get the result or you get null back. So optional is used in that case and it is introduced in Java 8. Okay. What is functional interface? Functional interface is, is an interface which has only uh, one abstract method. And uh, that interface is generally annotated with add the rate uh, functional interface. And there are various functional interfaces in Java 8. For example, a uh, renable is a functional interface. Um, predicate is a functional interface. Uh, so in essence, it has one abstract method and there can be multiple default methods in functional interface. Okay. So what is predicate? Uh, predicate is also a functional interface and uh, you can you can write one test condition using predicate. So predicate is a te test condition. For example, uh, you have a list and there are various elements in the list and uh, integer elements in the list. And you want to uh, filter only elements which are greater than 18. Uh, for, uh, for example, who can vote. Uh, so you can perform this thing using predicate. You can write a predicate and uh, you can write condition as age is greater than 18. And to the filter method of the stream, you can pass this predicate to get the filtered results. Do you know method reference in Java? Uh, yes. So method reference, uh, generally to call a method, you have to create an instance of the class uh, just for calling the method. So uh, consider there is an interface, uh, which is a functional interface. And there is one class that implements that functional interface. So you implement uh, the class just for overriding that method or giving implementation of that method. So Java uh, has provided us with the convenience syntax where to call a me method from a class, you can write, uh, you can use method reference. For example, to call a println method from your system.out, you can write system.out and then the method reference operator and then the actual method name, which is println. So you can use method reference to call either static methods or instance methods. Okay. Let us consider I have a list or stream. Mm -hmm. And I have to convert that into an array by using Java. So can you do it? Yeah. So uh, you have a stream. Uh, so to get the stream, I can use list.stream. And to convert that to array, there is one method uh, known as to array. So when I call to array on my stream, it returns the array representation of your stream. So whatever elements will be there in the stream will be given to you back in the, in the array itself using to array method. Okay. What are the collections which you have worked on? I have worked on various collections, uh, hash map, uh, link list, array list, uh, concurrent hash map, uh, set, hash set. So these are okay. the collections. Okay. Consider I have a list of 100 elements. Okay. And I wanted to insert few elements in that list. And this operation is going to be frequent. So which collection you will prefer? Either a list or a link list. Okay, uh, so you have 100 elements and you have to insert in between the list, right? Yes. So in this case, uh, as the insertion is frequent, I'll go for linked list because linked list provides a uh, faster insertion of elements in between the list because it just changes uh, the references while inserting the element. Okay. Okay. What is meant by fail fast and fail safe iterator in Java? Uh, fail fast and fail safe. Um, generally, while iterating through your collection, okay? Uh, so you are iterating through your list, for example, and if some other thread uh, tries to modify the list on which you are iterating, in that case, uh, there is a concurrent modification exception. So this is fail fast. Fail fast means whenever, uh, whenever there's a collection on which you are iterating and some structural changes happen to that collection, then your code should fail. It results in concurrent modification and exception. So this is fail fast. Fail safe is where uh, while you are iterating over a uh, collection, you are given a copy of the collection. 
so you you don't iterate on the original collection you iterate on the copy of collection so whenever the underlying structure is changed your iteration is not hampered with that this is fail safe where you are working on copy so fail fast is um, array list linked list or all fail fast and concurrent hash map uh, copy on write array list are all fail safe okay do you know what is mean by array index out of bound exception and when it occurs uh, array index out of bound exception uh, is when you are trying to reference an element uh, which is suppose your array has a capacity of 10 that means it starts from 0 and there are uh, there is an index of 9 so it starts from 0 till index of 9 and you try to access 11th or 12th index of that array then it it gives you array index out of bound exception so it's a logical error where you are trying to reference an element which is uh, currently not present or array doesn't have that much capacity till now no okay okay fine so what kind of code repository you are using for your project mm, we are using uh, git few few of our projects are in git uh, few are in azure but generally we use git for our uh, project what is the use of git pull and git push command uh git pull is where uh, in the origin uh, so if if you are working on your local machine and your branch is checked in uh, in the git repository so if you want the latest code from the repository then you do git pull the so git pull gives you or pulls the latest code from the git repository push is where you make some changes on your local machine and you want to add those changes uh, to the git repository the remote repository in that case you use a git push Let us consider there is a scenario. There are two developers working on their respective branch, Dev one and Dev two. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now they have raised the merge request to merge their code changes into master branch. Okay. First developer is able to successfully merge his code. Okay. Okay, but second developer is getting some conflicts. So why this happening? Okay. So uh, there is a develop branch, okay, which is a common branch, and now uh, two developers are working on. two features so they create two branches uh, feature one branch and feature two branch okay yeah. now feature one branch is merged into my develop branch so till now everything is fine but while the developer who is uh, trying to merge feature two into the uh, develop branch he will get conflict because uh, the developer has moved one step further of its current state so in this case uh, the feature two developer has to pull the develop branch and then merge his changes after resolving conflicts then only he can merge his pull request to the develop branch okay fine so have you came across a situation like your project is running on your local system but it is not running on qa or production environment uh, yes i have worked uh, on various project and found this scenario frequently uh, the code works on local machine but it never it sometimes does not work on uh, the production machine or the virtual machines and the reason so, yeah how do you resolve it a uh, reason being uh, on my local machine suppose uh, there is there is a code to create a file into a directory uh, but uh, uh, when i run this code on my virtual machine uh, there i might not have permissions or for example i am trying to access some file location or for example the memory that i have have on my local machine and the memory that i get on my virtual machine to to solve this problem uh, we have something called as uh, docker where the code running on your local machine uh, will always run on your virtual machine using docker so docker is uh, the solution for this okay do you know what is ci cd yes ci cd is uh, ci is continuous integration and cd is uh, continuous delivery or sometimes it is called as um, continuous Uh, deployment so ci is, ci is continuous integration where uh, whatever code you do should be continuously merged into your branches and cd is where whenever you merge your code to that branch uh, your build should be triggered and it should be deployed to your environment so ci is where continuous integration uh, you should in- merge your code with the branches and build should be triggered and cd is where your new artifacts uh, after building should be deployed to your actual environment and that should be tested so this okay. is cd okay and which tool you are using for building your project in my current project i am using uh, jenkins but uh, in my previous project i used uh, azure tfs 
Okay. And how do you build your project by using Maven? Uh, or yes. is there any other repos? Uh, so we use uh, build tool as Maven. Uh, in my in my previous project, we used to use IBY, but uh, as Maven is um, used nowadays, so we are also sticking with Maven. So Maven build is the command. Uh, no. Maven clean. We can do clean. Can do build using Maven. No. Okay. And the dependencies which you are downloading using Maven. Are those dependencies coming from your own company repository or it is a general Maven repository? Uh, so in previously we were using central repository, but uh, due to compliance issues, uh, we are now using our own uh, company's repository. So we have our own repository and there's a team who maintains the repository, which has all the artifacts. So we are not using central repository. We are using uh, the managed repository by the company. Okay, fine. I have provided a code snippet in chat box. Can you copy it in your editor and share your screen? Yeah, so I am copying it and I am, uh, yeah, so I have shared my Eclipse. Uh, yeah, I can see. So uh, let us consider I have to generate random numbers. Okay. So can you write the code to generate it by using Java? Uh, yes, so I'll make use of a random class. Okay. Random uh, R A N D O M. Random is equal. To, I'll instantiate a random. Okay. okay. Uh, then I'll use. Uh, I'll try to use random dot. I'll try to get ints out of it. I'm I'm going to print int and I'm going to use for each. So I'm going to use uh, system dot out and this is the method reference. Okay. Okay. Double colon. And then I'm going to use um, println to print all, all the ints. Okay. So this yeah. is what and I'm you going have. To... Yeah, you have to print ten numbers. Ten numbers. Okay. So yeah. I'll I'll stop this, and uh, to print ten numbers, I'm going to use a limit, and I'm going to write ten. So this will limit my numbers to ten. So this will print ten the random numbers. Okay, so these numbers are very large numbers. Can you try to print the numbers within a range like one to hundred? Yeah. So while getting the ends, I can uh, pass the initial starting point and the ending point. So one to hundred is what we want. I'm going to run this program, and uh, these these are the numbers from one to hundred. Okay. So can you try to sort this? Is it possible for you to sort these numbers? Yeah. So I'll try to use. Uh, sorted so this will sort the elements in ascending order so this is the ascending order okay fine okay i'm done from my side do you have any question uh i don't have any questions thank you yeah thank you bye thanks bye bye